Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how I built this frame for the tabletop with the breadboard ends that I built in my last two videos. These legs have face grain on all four sides. There's a grid in the center and there's a bottom rail that has a through tenon on both sides. There's two top rails and they are dovetailed in. This video is going to be a little longer than normal because I'm going into a lot of detail on how I did this. If you stick around to the end, I'm going to show you one of the four chairs that I built that goes with this table. So let's get started. What I'm going to do is each of these four boards is for each leg and I'm going to cut a miter on each edge of the board and assemble them together. This is my plan for the legs. They're going to be two and three quarter inch square. Any aprons or anything that will join these legs will all be put in mortise and tenon style. I've got all of the leg blanks cut the 45 degree miter on each edge and what I'm going to do is turn them over and line them up and try to get the grain as best possible so that when you see a corner of a leg it'll look like one piece of wood. Now what I like about this technique is that on all four sides you end up with face grain. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of wood across here <clears throat> and set a heavy block on it. What that does is it holds these down flat. Take some blue painter's tape. I put it across these ends. I'm going to lay it across all four pieces. This blue tape is going to act as clamps. So what I'm going to do is turn it over that. Now I'll apply glue to all these surfaces. Now then we just roll it up. Roll that over there. Roll that in there, roll this up here, now we put the second set of clamps on, nice tight fit corners. Oh yeah, perfectly square. Perfect. Love it, love it, love it. I've got all my legs assembled, cut to length, and now it's time to lay out for the mortise and tenons for the stretchers. I'm going to cut the mortises in the legs with my mortising jig using my router. But with the stretchers, I'm going to put integral tenons on here. I'm not going to use loose tenons. I'll be cutting the tenons with the table saw. I've laid out all the mortises for all four legs and now I'm going to cut the mortises with my router on this router jig. To mark out for the tenon on the stretcher, first of all I line it up on the mortise where I want it and then I make a small mark at each end of the mortise. Then I'll take a square and bring that line all the way down on each one of these, each side. Tenon needs to be one inch long, look there. Mark there. 
take a square and that line and I'll transfer this line down on each side this is the part that's going to be cut out And then to get the width of the mortise, I've got this mortise engage set up, the uh, width of the mortise. I've got it set to the center of the board, and I'll just make a mark like that, slightly darken it a little bit. And now I've got all the dimensions cut. I'll put it in my tenoning jig on the table saw, and I can make all of these cut. There are many different ways to cut tenons. This is one way I like to use. This is a tenoning jig. This has multiple adjustments on it. It will move this fence. The board goes in here and clamps in there tight. This can move in and out. I can adjust it in and out this way. The fence will also adjust this angle and it will also adjust back and forth like this. So there's a multitude of adjustments you can do on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sneak up on this line right here and I can do that by slowly adjusting this in and out. Got a little more to go. All right, I made another pass. Let's see how this works. Yeah, there we go. That's what I like. That's right straight off of the table saw. That's really nice. That's a good solid fit. And one thing I like about this is that it has such a smooth surface on the face of the tenon. I've already cut the shoulders of it. Now all I have to do is cut this section off of each one. I'll probably do that with a handsaw and uh, round over the edges to match these edges of the mortise. So I rounded over the tenons and fine-tuned those to fit in the mortises so everything is put together now. The next thing I have to do is build a grid to go in here that matches the grid that is in the back of the dining chairs. This will also get an arch on the bottom two rails. This is what it will look like. There will be an arch on the bottom rail here and the grid will fit in the center between the legs. I'll have to resaw all the parts for the grid and plane them down to size and then cut mortise and tenons to secure them into the rail. They also have dados in them so that they can interlock side to side. I've laid out where I'm going to cut the mortises. I always like to put a center line mark in boards where I'm going to put mortises. It helps to get them evenly spaced. I've stacked all of the grid pieces with the tenons lined up and now I'm going to trim the tenons so that they're all the same size. I've grouped them all together. I'll just use a file. Now this has made them all exactly the same size. Since the mortises have all been cut the same size, they'll fit right in. My next step is to cut an arch in this bottom rail. Now I've determined the arch 
by measuring the arch on the back of the chairs that I built. The ratio of that arch to length distance is 1.5 to 1. So what I've done, I've used that same ratio and that's what I'm going to use to cut this arch. I've cut a piece of poster board that is the same dimensions as the bottom rail. I've found the center line and I've marked up two inches. I've put it between my bench dogs and my vise, clamped it down in the center, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this ruler to bend and get a perfect arch. I've also used wood to do this, but I've found that sometimes that wood just won't bend an even arch on both sides. Now, I'm guessing, people know better than me, that the probably is the grain direction. I found that it's never absolutely consistent. Whereas this aluminum ruler will always bend equally on both sides. So what I'm gonna do is I'll put it in there, bring it up to my two inch mark, make a mark like that. And now I've got a perfect arch from corner to corner. I'll cut this out and use this part to put on the bottom of the rail to mark where I want to cut it. My arches are cut. I've laid out the mortise for the through mortise. I got a little ahead of myself and cut this arch. I should have waited until after the mortise was cut to put it in these clamps. But what I'm going to do is I've got double sided tape on the off cut and I'll just attach the off cut to that piece of wood. That way it'll go in here and the clamps will hold. Got all my parts laid out here for the end. I've got my top and bottom rail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble this piece, this grid. Start with the first one. And take a slat, slide it down in the dado. The second rail. Put it in. The third slat, slide it down in the rail. Next one. And take the top rail. And there we have it. Now it's time to add the legs to the sides. Now it's time to add the bottom stretcher with the through tenon. And the last thing to go on is the two top stretchers with the dovetails on each end. So here it is complete. Here's the base. Here's the top with the ebony pegs and the breadboard ends. And here's one of the four chairs that I built for the set. Check out the videos where I show you how I build these chairs. Thanks for watching. In my next video, I'm going to be prepping and staining the base and the tabletop. I'll see you then.